just whack the microphone there. Never a good way to start. What a blessing today to gather together in Christ's name and worship our Lord and Savior. We're in the season of Pentecost, a season where we remember the Christ and the Lord has come to us and he's died and he's risen, that he will come again, that he's ascended into heaven, we celebrate It's not close enough to my my mouth. And during the first hymn, I'm going to go get a new battery because my battery's dead. Give me one second. Give me one moment. Let me grab a battery so that they can join us from online. So I'm going to use the mic here at the lectern until we get a new battery. With that, we make our beginning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We pause for a moment of silent confession. Trusting God's promise of forgiveness, let us confess our sin against God and one another. God, our strength, we confess that we are captive to the power of sin that dwells within us. We put ourselves first and others last. What we think will make us happy leaves us longing for more, even when we want to do what is good. We find ourselves doing the opposite. Rescue us from death's grip on our lives and raise us up day by day that we may be alive to God in Christ Jesus. Amen. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Therefore, we are justified by God's grace as a gift. Nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, in whom, We have forgiveness of sin, life, and salvation. So therefore I announce to you that all your sins are forgiven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Be with you. with you. Let us pray. Sovereign God, ruler of all hearts, you call us to obey you, and you favor us with true freedom. Keep us faithful to the ways of your Son, that leaving behind all that hinders us, we may steadfastly follow your path. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the first reading. The first reading for this third Sunday after Pentecost comes from 1 Kings chapter 19, starting at the ninth verse. Behold, the word of the Lord came to Elijah, and he said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? He said, I've been very jealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the people of Israel have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left, and they seek my life to take it away. And he said, Go out and stand on the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by. And a great and strong wind tore the mountains and broke in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind was an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, the sound of a low whisper. And when Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his cloak and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. And behold, there came a voice to him and said, 
What are you doing here, Elijah? He said, I've been very jealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the people of Israel have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, killed your prophets with the sword, and I, even I only, am left. And they seek my life to take it away. And the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when you arrive, you shall anoint Haziel to be king over Syria. And Jehu, the son of Nimshi, you shall anoint to be king over Israel. And Elisha, the son of Shapath of abel Mehola, you shall anoint to be prophet in your place. And the one who escapes from the sword of Haziel shall Jehu put to death. And the one who escapes from the sword of Jehu shall, shall Elisha put to death. Yet I will leave 7,000 in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. So he departed from there and found Elijah, Elisha, the son of Shapath, who was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen in front of him, and he was with the 12. Elijah passed by him and cast his cloak upon him. And he left the oxen, ran after Elijah, and said, Let me kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow you. And he said to him, Go back again, for what have I done to you? And he returned from following him and took the yoke of oxen and sacrificed them and boiled their flesh with the yokes of the oxen and gave it to the people, and they ate. Then he arose and went with Elijah and assisted him. This is the word of the Lord. Our psalm today is from Psalm 16. Preserve me, O God, for in you I take refuge. As for the saints in the land, they are the excellent ones, in whom, in whom is all my delight. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my lot. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel. In the night also my heart instructs me. Therefore my heart is glad and my whole being rejoices. My flesh also dwells secure. You make known to me the paths of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Preserve me, O God, for in you I take refuge. Our second reading is from Galatians chapter 5, beginning at the first verse. For freedom, Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. For you were called to freedom, brothers. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. For the whole law is fulfilled in one word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, watch out that you have not consumed by one another. But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit, and the desires of the Spirit are against the flesh. For those are opposed to each other, to keep you from doing the things you want to do. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident, sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalry, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, Patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. 
And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the ninth chapter. When the days drew near for Jesus to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem, and he sent messengers ahead of him, who went and entered a village of the Samaritans to make preparations for him. But the people did not receive him, because his face was set toward Jerusalem. And when his disciples James and John saw it, they said, Lord, Do you want us to tell fire to come down from heaven and consume them? Jesus turned and rebuked them. Then they went on to another village. And as they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests. But the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another he said, follow me. But he said, Lord, first let me go bury my father. And Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Yet another said, I will follow you, Lord. But let me first say farewell to those at my home. And Jesus said to him, No one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. This is the gospel of the Lord.
grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. 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 Please be seated. It's always nice when it works out that the hymn that you sing prior to the sermon actually fits your theme. Listen to the first verse again. How clear is our vocation, Lord, when once we heed your call to live according to your word and daily learn, refreshed, restored, that you are Lord of all and will not let us fall. I don't know about you, but I don't think those words are that easy to do. How clear is our vocation, Lord? Do you always know what you're supposed to do in your vocation, in your calling as a Christian? Do you always know the right answer to every question? Do you always know what God wants you to do in a given moment? I'll be honest, you guys don't need to. You're all sitting there with a little blank stares. You're amazed that I'm actually asking you a question. I don't. There are a lot of times I question things in life. There are a lot of times when I wonder, what is it I should do in this moment? There's a lot of times where my life feels like it's at odds with itself, where I'm struggling between doing this or this. And to me, that's the beauty of Paul's words to us as he talks about freedom. You know, this would have been perfect. It was just one week later. It would have been the 4th of July. We could have talked about freedom We're going to move up the 4th of July to today. We're going to talk about freedom. Why? Because that's where scripture goes. As I thought about freedom, for me, what came to mind, especially some of the things that have happened in the last week, is the First Amendment. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion, prohibiting the free exercise thereof, abridging the freedom of speech, freedom of the press, or the right of people peaceably to assemble, to petition the government for a redress of grievances. I really like the U.S. Constitution. I'm one of those wacky people that actually reads it every year. It's a part of my own tradition. It's one of those things that I don't know where it came from, but growing up, I was given this little pocket size constitution. Let me be clear. I also read scripture. I don't just read the constitution. I only read that once a year. Scripture I read on an ongoing basis. But I read it once a year. And so often I'm amazed because let me be clear. I don't think it's perfect by any stretch. But I'm amazed at the way our forefathers looked at these documents, those who came before us, the way they created this idea of what it meant to be a country. And I am one that does take pride in the U.S. I think we do some wonderful things. I don't think we're perfect. I think we have a lot to learn. I think we're very young in so many ways, but... This idea of freedom, the freedoms that we enjoy, the freedoms that we are able to express. When I look at the world around us, I struggle at times to understand how people can think a certain way. I struggle to understand that with the freedom that I enjoy, how can they treat others in that way? When I look at the world, I'm not just talking about overseas. I'm talking about those around me. We see this world on display around us. We actually see it today as people exercise their rights for, as the amendment says, a redress of grievances. I don't know how that gets signed. I don't actually often have to, I have to think through what that actually means in life. But what I love about it, what I love about this amendment, what I love about freedom, is that if I am going to be a supporter of freedom, it means at times that I have to submit myself to others. That while I might not agree with what someone else is saying or believing in, I believe in freedom. I believe they have the right 
to say that. I believe they have the right to protest. I believe they have the right to march. I believe they have the right to speak. Notice that word. Speak. Not scream at each other. Not ignore one another. But talk with each other. It means I should support their right to assemble. That to me is one of those weird parts of this country. Is that inherent, baked into who we are, is a freedom that's set apart, where we support our, where we are supposed to support one another, even when we don't agree. And so we have this situation that can be a challenge. But I think that freedom comes from a certain place. I actually think that freedom is exactly what Paul is speaking of today in the epistle lesson. For freedom, Christ has set us free. Those words are huge. It's not just a simple sentence. It's a huge understanding that gets baked into, gets packed into that exact wording. For freedom, Christ has set us free. First and foremost, we have to remember, we have to understand where we are, that we have not set ourselves free, that we couldn't do it on our own. Look at the Old Testament. Look at what Elijah was going through. It's very simple to see that we can't make this happen. There's a reason we confess our sins before God, because we can't make ourselves perfect. No matter how hard we try, no matter what we've done in life, we all know that there are struggles within. And so Christ steps in in that moment. And we celebrated that as a part of Easter. We remember that, but we've already done it as a part of our service where our sins are forgiven. And so Christ is the one who sets us free. Frees, frees us from the bonds of sin. Frees us from the penalty of death. And he does this on his own. It's part of the mystery of faith. It doesn't make sense why God would love us. Loves me, yes. But loves us. Each and every one of us. Those that have gathered in this place, but those that are out on the street. Those people that make you uncomfortable. God died for their sins. And he simply does it for freedom's sake. John 8, 36, if the Son has set you free, then you are free indeed. For freedom, Christ has set you free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit to a yoke of slavery. You know, according to Hebrew law, there are 613 laws. 613 ceremonial and uh, laws and regulations. All these things that you had to do, ways of cleaning yourself, ways of being prepared to receive God's love. And the Israelites couldn't live up to those 613. I know I can't myself. I like pork. That's one right there. And those are the light ones. Those aren't the ones dealing with relationship. Those aren't the ones dealing with other people. That's simply a regulation on what I can eat. For freedom, Christ has set you free. And Christ fulfills all of these laws for us. For each and every one of us, Christ goes to the cross for us. It's a deeply personal thing. Because it affects me individually as one that Christ loves. But I can't just see it that way. It can't just be about me. Because when Christ goes on the cross, he dies for the sins of all people. But he doesn't stop there in these words. For freedom Christ has set you free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit to a yoke of slavery. I have set you free, Christ says. Don't throw other things on yourself. Don't throw a yoke on your own shoulders that takes you away from that freedom. Because with freedom comes 
trust. With freedom comes choice. All of a sudden, we are free to live our lives as we would choose. No longer do we submit to that yoke of slavery, that yoke of sin. God has taken that away. And he said, you are mine, now go and live differently. And so we are warned to not come under another yoke. For you were called to freedom, brothers and sisters. Only do not use this freedom as an opportunity for the flesh. But love, but through love, serve one another. So we are set free by Christ. And he calls us to live in that freedom. And the question becomes, then how are we to act? If we are free, if we can do what we choose to do, if we can choose to do whatever we want, how are we to live as Christians? And even as we talk about freedom in this country, that same reality is true. Think about it for a moment. If you took the subway here, you probably paid a fare. You swiped your card. You got on the subway and you came here. You didn't duck under the turnstile. You didn't jump over. You didn't wait for someone to hit the emergency bar and walk in that way. Because if you had, you could have been arrested. Probably not that bad. Could have been fined. If you drove here, you drove on a specific side of the road. You stopped at stoplights, you stopped at stop signs, you turned where appropriate, or hopefully you did. Because we agree to live in that way, even though I have the freedom to drive on the other side of the road, even though I have a freedom where I can jump, well, I might be able to jump the turnstile. The reality is, as a part of my freedom, there are times where I choose not to do things where I submit myself for the sake of my brothers and sisters to live in a certain way. Do not submit yourself to a yoke of slavery. And so Paul talks about what those sins of the flesh are. The works of the flesh are evident, sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger dissensions, divisions, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. It's an interesting list Paul puts together. Because it's not just these sins that we would place up here that are on the top of the list. Because some of these I'm guessing that you can't relate to. Maybe you can. If so, we probably should talk afterwards. But everyone can talk about one of these some on these lists, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, dissension, division. I think we can all relate in one way or another that these are things that we struggle with in our lives, that these are things that we can see ourselves having made choices at times. And these are the things we lay before God as gifts to him. They are ugly gifts. And God says, I don't care. I give you freedom for freedom's sake. As Christians, we are set free from those sin. And now we choose how we are to live. Hear that clearly. You choose how you are to live as baptized believers in Jesus, as ones that Christ went to the cross, died for your sins, made them white as snow, you now can choose how you live, how you interact with other people. Look at the disciples. Call down fire on heaven for what they're thinking, Lord. And Jesus says, no. We come to live love. And that's how we are to live. Do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love. Serve one another. So often we want to jump off the edge and just come down on people. Why won't you just be this way? And 
Jesus says, no. Through love, serve one another. Think about that contrast that Paul makes. Some of those things on that list of sins that he makes are enjoyable for the moment. But Paul says, don't submit to that yoke of those things. Choose this. Choose to live in the love that Christ has given you. Choose to live in the freedom that he has set you free from. Choose to share that. And choose to submit yourself. To love your neighbor as yourself. Through love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. We have been set free by Christ. Set free to live as we would choose to live. Set free to live in the love that God has given us. And to live that love out in our daily lives. To live that love with the people we encounter. To live that love with the brokenness we see in this world. To live that love as people try to struggle with the problems that travail them. To live that love as we speak out in this world. To live that love in the midst of hurting and dying. Not just physical death that we hear of in the gospel lesson. But Jesus there hints of spiritual death as well. Jesus doesn't call us to come and to judge one another, to judge what sins are right, what are worse, or what is to the way we are to be. But he simply sends us out to serve one another. Think about that for a moment. To serve. Not in anger, jealousy, fits of rage, but through love, with our ears open wide, our hearts open wide, our arms open wide, what would this world look like if we actually listened to what Paul asks us to be? What Jesus teaches on over and over and over and over again. To live love. Those are the words I live, leave with you. How do you, as one who has been set free by Christ, through love, through living love, serve those around you. When you answer that, you are living the life of a Christian. To Christ be the glory. Amen. Let us rise as we make confession of our faith to the words of the Apostles' Creed. Together with our sisters and brothers in Christ throughout the world, we confess the Christian faith. I believe in one God. in prayer, that the church would have the zeal of Jesus Christ who set his face to go to Jerusalem, who lived love every day of his life, to share with us the freedom that we have as he goes to the cross. 
Let us pray to the Lord. For all pastors and church workers, for each of us as we labor in proclaiming God's steadfast love and living that love in our daily lives, announcing freedom from the yoke of slavery to sin, pointing all toward the cross of Christ. Lord, may it never be in vain, but may you work through us to share that gospel-proclaimed message, that love incarnate with the world. Let us pray to the Lord. For Christian homes, that they would never be a stumbling block to the kingdom of God, but would be places of love, of growth, of the fruit of the Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. For our president, our governor, the legislature and magistrates, that God would grant them insight and wisdom, direct them to punish evildoers, reward the righteous, and strive for peace, to work through ideas of justice and care. Let us pray to the Lord. For those in our prayer requests, for Rajmati, friend of Sonam Chodin, for Walter, father of David Shields, for Sonam Chodin, for the fair family of Kathleen Alms, Lord, and all those who struggle in this time, struggle with thoughts, struggle with issues at home, struggle with homelessness and all those other things that come on our hearts and minds, those who we lift up before you now in this silence. Lord, we lift those and all who request your prayers, that God would be a refuge in times of trial, granting healing, strength, and comfort. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who commune this day, that God would thereby graft into our hearts the love of his name and the fruit of the Spirit to express love for God by bearing fruit for our neighbor's good, by living out your love. Let us pray to the Lord. For the church of Jesus Christ, that our eyes may be fixed on him and the way of his cross, that she would be spared from hindrance and distraction and that her freedom in the gospel would not become an excuse for sin and vice, but an opportunity for love and service. Let us pray to the Lord. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And as we remain in our seats, we give that sign of peace to those gifts of the earth, these resources of our life and our labor, take them offered in great thanksgiving, and use them to set a table that will heal the whole creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and light. Amen. The 
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
As we go from side to side, it'll switch over to the left side, you'll get it, and then you just return down the side of it. With that, the table is prepared.
strengthen and preserve you, keep you steadfast in true faith to life everlasting. Go in peace and serve our Lord. Amen. ancestors, God of all people, before whose face the human generations pass away. We thank you that as the broken bread we was gathered into one loaf, the broken fragments of our history are gathered up and healed by the redeeming act of Christ. Send us forth in peace. Form us into what we celebrate, the body of Christ in this world, that we might live love. Nourished by this sacrament, give us strength and courage to serve you in daily life with joy and singleness of heart. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. Please be seated for our announcements. Good morning. Is this the coolest place to be on a Sunday morning? <laughs> tell, you, tell your friends. Tell, you know, tell people that aren't here yet. <laughs> okay. uh, I'd like to thank Bishop McCase again for another beautiful service. Thank you. Uh, summer Bible Fellowship classes are, are resumed again, right? Uh, at 10 o'clock in the morning on Sunday morning. Uh, the barrels for the Dominican Republic we got till the end of July. We're going to try and fill them up. They need medical supplies, uh, food, dry food, stuff like that. Summer clothes, adults and children, summer clothes. Not winter clothes, summer clothes. All right. Uh, Bishop of Case is going to talk about this. But in your flyer, what did I do? I lost it. Oh, here it is. Uh, you received the circular. Living love, that's the, that's the uh, upcoming Atlantic District Convention, which is in July 22nd and 23rd. Uh, on this, we, on the back, the Atlantic District has missionary funding, and they're asking people to uh, donate. It tells you how to do it. If you do it here at church, you write the check out to the Atlantic District. Uh, LCMS. Uh, you can put it in a white envelope, put Atlantic District on it, leave it in a collection box, and I'll bring it to the convention on the 22nd. Bishop LaCase will mention some more about it. Want to say something about sure, it? Sure, I can yeah. say something about it. Uh, it's just what this does is supports the ongoing work of our churches together. So all the district is, remember, is just our 97 churches as we come together as one. And so these are churches from basically the, the, our northernmost is on Scroon Lake. It's called Sunrise. Uh, it goes from Sunrise, but really we go all the way to Canada, down through the Capital Region, through the Hudson Valley, through Westchester, five boroughs of New York, where we are, and then out on the, to the tip of Long Island. So in that area, 97 churches that reach out to roughly 19 million people in the eastern half of New York State. That is our opportunity. That is our mission field. And so these offerings go to support work and workers to be done in all of those places, not just one. Although the most single most important is Woodside, and we all know that. We can't do all of our work here. So we do it throughout uh, the eastern half of New York, and that truly is a blessing. And that's how we live out love in our lives. So you got one more. 
just yelled at me. Claudio just yelled at me. Uh, call committee meeting, Tuesday night, 7 o'clock, right? All right, please. It's, please attend it. It's, uh, I can't say it's mandatory, but it's required. Please. 7 o'clock. <laughs> I don't want to be rude. Okay. The freedom that you have, your choice is to be there. That's what I think I heard. Uh, once again, it's always an honor for me to be here in my home congregation um, and just to be a part of worship. I truly do enjoy it. I love it. And I ask you to rise. Go out into the world in peace. Love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul, with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. May the Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen.